and then you can just kind of start to work some of that grime at the top of the ladder here just in various little spots just kind of dry brush it you just want to put a little grime on some little areas here and there just to kind of make things or make some of the little details pop out just a little bit on these ladder struts and these little railings just here and there I've also put in a little grime on the floor or in the interior panel right here just a little bit though not too much again a relatively light wash would work as well in here and then just a little bit of grime on this area here as well, just kind of streaking down around the reporting marks and here and in between these pipes and these sills is where I really hit that grime. But again, it's not too heavy. It's just in particular on the bottom here, on the bottom of the sill where you see the kick-up spray, the coupler box, and the coupler itself. Okay, so now for the top of the roof. This is going to be a relatively light job. So again, I'm not going to go too crazy with this. But what I want to do is at least put some grime on these walkway treads or the walkways rather, if you will, the photo etch parts, just so we can get a little bit of a grime coat on these, because these are where you'll see a lot of times a little bit of oxidation on these, so we just want to put a little bit of grime on it, but not too much. So this will most, mostly be like a dry brushing technique here. You can see I wipe most of the paint off of the brush here, down here, and I'm using straight earth brown. And you just start to work it into the photo etch like this. You can see it doesn't take too much to cover, but you just go down the length of these walkways will take a little bit more paint off and just start working it in like this and you can see I'm using kind of like a scrubbing motion on the brush here to really work it in but it covers very, very well. And like I said, I'm not going too crazy with this. I still want, I just want this to be a relatively light coating on these uh, photo etch pieces. Just to kind of give a color variation. Make it look not so, like it's not such clean, bright, shiny metal. Because this stuff does oxidize relatively quickly in real life. And that's why it's important to cover these up. Some cars I've seen, especially the older ones, the walkways especially, will just rust to hell on a lot of it. But since this is a relatively newer car, we just want to at least have just a little bit of grime just to kind of, you know, fade down the metal. You can also do a whitewash on the metal I found. will make it look really, really nice and kind of like an oxidized metal where it's not really grimy but just oxidized. You can do that effect too. But on th in this particular case, I just want to represent just a simple grime color on these. But you can see it really makes them look, it doesn't, it makes them, you know, dulled down quite a bit and they're not so shiny anymore and they have that nice bit of grime on them and then we'll start working on the top roof portion of the car where the hatches are we'll just take the paint again and again you just kinda go in and work it in a streaking manner along the top of the car like this I'm not really trying to hit the tops of the hatches, I just want to leave some streaks of grime at the very top. And again, I'm using a scrubbing motion and just working in a motion like this, as you guys can see, I'm on the top. Just little hints of grime at the very top, not too much. And then just go over the hatches, just very lightly. But it's not that heavy, again, you can see it's very, very light. Alrighty, so now we're going to do a nice little technique on the roof here of taking just a little bit of charcoal gray acrylic paint and dry brushing this on the roof to do some really neat paint chipping effects. So I'm using, like, a, like I said, a darker gray over the contrast of the light gray uh, to kind of look like some primer underneath the paint, which is starting to kind of deteriorate a little bit. So again, you just kind of blotch this on just in random little spots to look like paint chipping where well, there might be some high traffic areas especially just like this really working it in in a blotching motion and this little uh, vent here again just kinda randomly do this just scatter it around a little bit to get that effect. So you can see the effects we just got here on the roof by doing those paint chipping effects, putting the grime layer on there. It looks very convincing for a modern covered hopper. Alrighty, so now that we get most of the acrylic work done, I want to go ahead and switch over to the chalk pestles. 
And this is the part where you can add a lot of fresh rust, uh, rust effects. You can do a lot of special grime uh, techniques. You can do, uh, you know, the darkening of panel lines, all kinds of nice effects with the chalks. So I will go ahead and bring these back in. As I mentioned earlier, I generally use these three colors in the uh, corner of the palette here. And I've made a little mix of chalk colors in this corner here, which will, I'll be showing you guys where I use those later. Uh, the first thing I want to do though, is I'll take this, and using my uh, rugged chalk applicator here, this old brush, I'm going to take straight earth brown and I'm going to hit the sides of uh, the car up like this. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way um, is because all that chalk is built up in these bristles. Now, when you go sideways like this, what happens is that chalk comes out of the brush and catches on the edges of these, you know, raised details, like the panel lines, for example, as I showed. And what you get in the end is it only get, gathers on these panel lines. So it darkens them and it doesn't get anything else, which is really cool. And you can see what a nice little effect that is. It's a, a kind of quick way of doing a dark panel line or a darkened panel line effect on the car. And you can also do this vertically too, it's kind of up to you, however you want to do that. Um, I won't be showing all of this, but it's kind of hard to see, but you can see it darkens the panel lines just a bit. Uh, really nice. And I'll go ahead and apply a little more here. This one, I'll stop about here, I'll complete the other half of the car first. I want to kind of focus these chalk pestle effects again at the top of the car, kind of this, uh, around this little bits of rust to kind of do some halo effects. As I mentioned before, I like to do the rust haloing uh, around the acrylic uh, just because it adds a nice little effect to it. And again, around the support. Just build it up there. And just work it in these just little areas, just at, kind of at random. Also, we'll get some in these uh, scratches to kind of give them, again, a little bit more depth and some halo effect as well just like that. I'll wipe the excess off and you can see it leaves, uh, leaves behind a nice little effect uh, on the scratches. It's very nice. So I'm just going to keep working the chalk pestles into these little areas including the top sill, the uh, sill lines, and all kinds of uh, really in all of these little areas. And then I'll be able to switch gears and work on the trucks. Okay, so to finish up the trucks here, I went ahead and picked up some more of the straight earth brown in my brush, and I'm going to go ahead and start applying it in the wheel tread, or the wheel face here, just to give some more color variation and more of a realistic, bright, rusty earth tone kind of a color to these. As you can see, compared to the acrylic paint, which is relatively flat in texture, the chalks really give it a nice, a kind of an enhancement in that texture, in the, you know, in the detail. It also adds a lot of color variation, in my opinion. Looks very nice. So I'm going to do this on all the wheels. You can do this on the interior, or on the inner wheel face as well, if you would desire, uh, you know, if you like. If you want to take the time to do that, you can. In this particular case, I'm just going to leave these uh, flat acrylic. Uh, you know, and also keeping in mind too that the wheel faces on the outside are going to rust differently than the ones on the interior, which are going to stay a relatively darker grime. If you guys pay, uh, you know, pay attention to real railroad, you know, real railroad wheels, they all weather differently. Each bit, of, uh, each part of the truck, each part of the wheel weathers differently, and usually the uh, axle and the wheel faces on the the uh, you know the rims of the wheels on the interior wheel face, they usually weather a little bit darker, so that's generally why I don't usually do the chalks. However, if you want to, like I said, you have that option and you can if you want. I went ahead and applied the chalks into the wheel faces though. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys this little mix. I know you guys are curious about this. What this is here is a mixture of my rust tone, my earth brown, and a little bit of black mixed in as well. 
And what this creates is a nice earth, a very, very convincing rust earth tone. And on trucks, especially on the springs, on the bolster area, you'll see this uh, brighter rust tone. So I kind of created this little mix here just for that, and also the couplers, which we'll get to in a minute. So you just pick up a little bit at a time, you can see, not too much, and you just apply it just like you would if you were using aim powders or something like that. And I'm just going to start applying this around the springs directly onto the springs and in this general area here where it'll matter like this but you can see it adds again a nice little bit of color variation and then I'll follow behind to finish this off with a little bit of brighter rust directly on the springs like this you can hit some on the bearing caps as well you can really go into as much detail as you like with your trucks it's totally up to you you have the freedom to but this is generally my uh, basic mix for the truck weathering, as you can see, it looks very nice, very convincing. Okay, so. Okay, so as we look at the coupler here, I'm again going to take my powder mixture, which I have again right here, and I'm going to take a little bit and uh, pick it up on the bristles. I'm going to use a little bit more since this is uh, we're weathering the entire surface of this coupler with the chocks, and you guys will really see where these this mix comes in handy to really make this uh, the metal pop. Really look like real rust and grime. And you just start, like I said, building it up, blotching it on the coupler here and there. Again, I'm trying to be careful of the spring. I don't want to just bust that off. And you just apply it very, very, very gently like this. But as you can see, this is the mix that you get once you uh, put everything together with the bit. Uh, the bits of the black, the grime, and the orange. You get this really nice earthy tone as you can see. Uh, as I demonstrate that, this color it just works very very well for these couplers. As you can see. So I'm going to go ahead, apply a little bit. And again with couplers you can really layer these as much as you like. It's your complete you know, personal preference how much you want to put into the couplers. This is my basic mix for the couplers though is the acrylics first and then fall behind with the chocks. So now I have my X-Acto blade, and I'm going to show you guys something really cool here. This is something, a really, really neat little effect you can do to take advantage of the KD couplers. I take the coupler like this and scrape the knuckle like this to get it down to bare metal to actually look like the impacted surface of another coupler striking it like this. Can get a little bit in here too, in the corner of the knuckle there, and on the interior of the knuckle especially. Something like that, as you guys can see. Just like that. What I'm going to do, now that I've done that, is I'll go ahead and follow behind with some more chocks and blend everything out. Uh, because generally with these scratches, these rust back over pretty quickly. But just to have that bare metal touch uh, on the coupler, it's a very common effect you see on couplers. Hit the air hose here a little bit too with those chocks. You can work the chocks on the ends here as well. It's your preference. I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, chalk on this walkway here on the ends. Just a little bit, like I said, not too much. And I'll basically repeat this step for the other end. So you can see it's really starting to come along now. We got the chocks on the trucks in the wheel faces. It's, everything's blended out. We got all the rust effects done on the tops of the sills. All the haloing effects on the scratches, on the streaking. Everything's really, really coming along now on this car. Okay, so as we sort of start to wrap up this project, uh, one of the things I want to do real quick while I have the opportunity uh, before I do anything else is to do some graffiti work as you guys know I like to add a lot of small tags actual hand-painted graffiti onto the sides of these cars now in this particular case with this prototype it has some gang scribble written on the side and I'm using some prototype photos of a similar car uh, to do the graffiti on this and you can do the graffiti with many many different techniques really I mean it's, it's totally up to you as you guys know I like to use paint pens I like to use sharpie pens like these these fine tip markers work very very well for graffiti you can see very fine tips and then I also like to use um, all kinds of you know 
like I said, micron pens work pretty well. Uh, you can use that kind of thing. And you can also do hand-painted graffiti where you can draw the scribble on there. You can do the larger tags. As you guys know, I do a lot of larger tags. I do a lot of full-size graffiti, sometimes full car. And that's when the brushes come in. But for smaller tags, I like to generally use just like regular Sharpie pens. Um, so what I want to go ahead and do is zoom in on the corner here and get started with some of the graffiti. So at the very bottom of the car here, starting over the first bay, there's a few little tags that I want to start putting in. And I'm just going to take my pen and I just simply draw them like this. And again, I'm using uh, photos for this. You can kind of uh, freelance this if you like. Uh, I generally, myself, I have my own art style for graffiti, but I generally like to use the prototype photos because it gives me a better reference and is a better guide, in my opinion, for doing the graffiti. So I'm just going to do a few small tags there, and then there's another little one right under the 2-inch HF Com shoes. And run right here. Something like that. And again, one about right here, one that's actually a little bit larger. And you just take your time with this. Like I said, there's no rush. You just fill it in one little bit at a time. There's something like a signature on the end of this car that I'm going to kind of try to draw in there real quick. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and switch gears now to a Micron pen, which is bright red. And again, I'm going to add some different colored tags here, which are on the car. So I'm just going to add that and do the little signature there at the top. And then go back and add one. It looks about right here. There's one. Now these pens work very well, but what I will mention about them is that the ink can take a little while to dry. So, one of the things about this, if you plan on putting the graffiti on the car using Micron pens, you don't want to clear coat this necessarily right away because what can happen is it'll bleed really bad. And I know this from personal experience, uh, trying these out for the first time, they, they don't like clear coat very well uh, when you first apply it. And so you need to really let these dry, like maybe a day or two, uh, generally. So, I got the red on that side, and then it looks like there's one more red tag about right here. And then a little dot on each part right here. Something like that. But you can see it's some uh, simple prototype graffiti from a car like this. And again, that's where these little pens really come in handy to do this stuff. And of course, you can do this with a brush. I have done this before with brushes. And it's really no different than anything else. You're just, you know, sharpening up the tip with a little water and then dipping into the paint and then looking at the prototype photos and 
basically painting the lines out. I've done that before a lot with my early graffiti attempts, uh, but lately I found a lot of these smaller, you know, gang scribble tags and stuff like this just look so much better when you draw them on. I know some people are a bit uh, against Sharpie usage and stuff like that and say it's kind of stupid or whatever, but in my personal opinion, I think they, they work uh, quite well, and they do a good job representing the small little tags like you see on this car. But I want to go ahead and apply some grain spillage uh, that I see in some prototype photos here again. And what I'm going to incorporate in this to do these effects are some Anita's acrylic, uh, flat white. And what I'm going to do with this is basically a wash. So if we zoom out here, you again can see that I have a bowl of water standing by. I'm going to bring this in a little bit closer. I hold the cap about like this. You can see there's a plenty of paint in there. I take my fine tip brush, dip it in there, get a good bit of paint on the bristles, take it and dip it in the water. And if you guys can see this, I just take and dilute it with some water. Like this. To kind of create a wash. Something like that. And as we take this over to the model, I'll go ahead and start at this top hatch. I just put a little bit of this white wash around the hatch. A little bit more paint. And you just build this up. Again, I, I want this to be a subtle kind of a spillage, like it's, it's well washed over the sides a couple times by now. It's been rained on a few times, I mean. Not necessarily a, a new bit of spillage. And again, you can just really do this as much as you like, if how heavy or as light as you want. It's totally up to you. And again, if you're doing it off of prototype photos, kind of try to, you know, guesstimate what this is probably going to be like on the roof. I'm just guesstimating what this is, you know, accumulating from at the top. But obviously it's coming from the hatches, but the actual amount of spillage and where the pattern is and all that really just depends. Um, and since there's, you know, Normally not too many prototype photos of the top shots of these cars. Uh, you just kind of have to guesstimate it, but I know it's kind of hard to see, but if you look, you can see the whitewash. And now what you do is you take and you start working under the walkways like this. And you start streaking it down like this, a little bit at a time. Get a little more paint. And then you can work it on this part here, on the top sill, and then you streak it down, like this. You can see the streaks are pretty thick, but I want them to be relatively thick on this anyways. But if you want to make these extra tight, you can, uh, like I said, go back with the Q-tip and define these a little bit more. It's totally your preference here, but I want these to be relatively thick. And one more fine line. Going down right here. And then back up. Now, as you guys know, I like to add texture to a lot of the grain spillage that you see on these cars. So what I like to do is I'll zoom in here around the hatch very carefully. I take my fine tip brush, I dip it in a little bit of white glue, which I have laid out on this piece of paper, and I apply this glue onto the areas that I just applied the whitewash, like this. And then I take a little bit of baking soda to do this effect. So I sprinkle the baking soda onto the area like that. Sprinkle those fine little particles onto there. And then what you can do, if I can get my hands clean, take that, blow most of it off, and what you're left with is a nice textured effect of some of the flour left behind. So you 
guys can see the uh, grain spill effect and again it's a very nice little detailed effect you can do on these cars it really enhances the detail it really makes that kind of pop out uh, I've gotten a lot of good uh, good feedback and attention from doing this so I, I like to continue to do this kind of effect on these grain cars so I'm really happy with that and then of course the streaking down the sides again with the acrylics looks very very nice so here we have the completed car at this point it's uh, pretty much completed I've gotten all of the weathering effects uh, done everything looks uh, everything's looking good and I'm very pleased with it and like I said this is a nice modern new car you can uh, to have on my roster it'll be going into service hauling flour on my railroad and again it's like I said another nice example of the cars that I try to model more often than rust bucket cars which are these nice clean cars and again, you know, most people don't think that a clean car is challenging enough. Um, but in reality, these are so common these days. You see a lot of repainted cars with just light weathering. A lot of times even just the wheels and trucks and couplers will be weathered up and the car body itself will be virtually clean. And it might have a little graffiti here and there, but that's all you see. And this is one of those examples of one of those kinds of cars where even a light weathering job can be highly detailed, as you can see. So I'll go ahead and show the other side of this here again with the host of all the nice little effects that I've done to this just very beautiful I'm very happy with the car you guys can see all the rust streaking all the grime work on the trucks all the graffiti work everything just looks absolutely incredible I'm very happy with it and again the load spill on the top is just a very very nice compliment to the car a very nice detail So like I said, at this point, the car is pretty much complete and ready to go in service. Uh, you guys, on your end, if you choose, you can put a clear coat on this. Uh, about a day or two, like I said, you want to let these inks dry first very, very well. Otherwise, if you put a clear coat on it now, it'll just bleed up. So you want to let the ink dry for about a day, and then you can follow behind with a dull coat or a clear coat finish of your choosing. In this particular case, I'm not going to do that just because I want the chalks to look relatively fresh, uh, representing fresh rust. So I am not going to be putting a dull coat on this car. Uh, fortunately, with all these weathering applications and my particular handling of these cars, I've never had any issues with any of the weathering you know, scratching or peeling off or fading down over time. Uh, but if you handle cars a lot or if they get rubbed up against something else or other cars or something, you may want to consider putting a clear coat on this. Uh, it's totally your, your preference there. All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps up the video. Hopefully this was encouraging and helpful to you guys, and hopefully you can build upon some of these techniques that I've demonstrated to perfect your own weathering techniques. Uh, and like I said, a car like this is a good example of a car these days, how even a lightly weathered car can have multiple different effects on it uh, that you'll see. And so hopefully, like I said, it was encouraging to you guys. Hopefully you guys can learn from some of this. If you have any questions, be sure to leave comments below. You guys can check out my Facebook page, Dan's Custom Trains, and you guys can follow the group there if you, if you care to. It's totally up to you. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for more videos as they come. I'll be sure to keep uh, producing them and making more how-tos like this. Hopefully in the next video we can kind of discuss, uh, again, focusing more on the graffiti aspect. I know that's another popular subject, and I will have a video on that coming out very soon, and I will also have a video on doing rust bucket cars very soon, I promise that. Uh, so again, stay tuned for more, guys, in the future. And again, thanks for watching, and I think this car looks pretty awesome. Take care.